What is up, everybody? Oh, excuse me. Doing a little bit of an impromptu stream today. So, I won't lie. I'm actually looking into something. And if you're in the chat, curious, did anybody else notice they didn't get a pre-release kit? A pre a pre release uh, like the promo code for this set. So uh, I am realizing looking I'm looking at my I got two sealed kit uh, kits. I did an at home and a and a regular one and I'm realizing right now that I don't have I didn't I never got an arena code. It wouldn't shock me if they like discontinued it because you know it is Wizards of the Coast and no Ravens for everything we're worth, basically, but you know, at the same time, it's like, like, fucking really? <laughs> Word forbid we get six booster packs on Arena. I don't want to affect Watsy's bottom line. Um, I'm sure if John Finkel's on the board with all his lack of experience, he'd be giving us six free packs. Alright, we're gonna... I got some I got some packs to crack right now. I'll just crack them real quick. Cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm gonna I wanted to play some Luca Pen Unlimited. I have my sealed entry. I'm gonna use it right now. Okay, so we've got. Yeah, it's. Not too great. We got a Halo Fountain, which that's a real big commitment to white. More often than not, Halo Fountain, in at least limited, you're going to use those first two modes. Uh, Body Launder is pretty good. Z Zeatora is phenomenal. It's a six man, six six flyer, which is quite good. Okay. So, a few things I've learned uh, so far in. Limited, you can kind of go two ways. So you look at your, uh, first you always want to look at your fixing. So like here we've got two Obscura uh, storefronts. We've got, we, so we don't have very good fixing at all actually. We've got one of the big exile creatures. We've got a couple of treasure makers. Okay. So here, I feel like we're going to want to try our best to stay within our, uh, kind of our regular colors. So it definitely feels like we're, we're in for, like, Zeatora. Like, just like, it's probably the best card. Uh, if we're going to go into Zeatora, we might as well play the Riveteer's Charm. So it's going to enable us to, uh, you know, we're, we're already working to enable that color combination. So let's take a look here. Do we have any other no other Riveteers cards? We do have Body Launderer, which is a strong card. Looks like our green is quite quite bad. In all honesty. Tended social light. We also have some strong Naya cards between Civil Servant. Jetmere's fixture. We just don't have any good Naya fixing is our biggest problem. Oofed up. Nah, it's pretty it's pretty grand and sealful, to be honest. <laughs> um, alright, so we play the cleanup crew. It's a good top end card. We got one duel to play. But we have Strangle, not the Mayhem Patrol. This is a this is a kind of card that really helps fix our mana up. This isn't an amazing card, but it can be quite strong if we have a lot of treasures. I'm not a big fan of this the card, but it is a big you know removal spell. Sticky Fingers is quite strong, especially with cheap creatures. So big into that. Cutthroat Contender. So it looks like we're mainly going to be a Rakdos deck that's uh, 
gonna splash into our, our third color here. And I actually I actually don't mind that at all. Not bad. Two uh, it's just a two mana two two. Uh, one two flying death touch isn't isn't the worst thing in the world. And our green cards, we have attended social light. I like that because it's a two drop. It's it's a two three with reach is is fairly strong. I don't think we can really pull off any kind of white splash. So I'm not gonna bother trying. I think I like this. Sadly, our mana is gonna be the biggest hurdle here. In fact, it's a few too many cards. Actually, we should favor mountains here. I think this should be fine. Um, you know, we got big threats. We've got some removal. We'll just have to play some, you know, just uh, tight, aggressive magic. Not the end of the world that uh, if we end up not doing all that hot anyway. Because it is, you know, it's just a little bit cool. That's our free, uh, free draft here. Okay. Looks like we got Ralph Punk, huh? All right. Well, I don't think we're looking at that. So, this is, uh, I think we're going to follow up. Okay, this is a lot better. So, I'll put back a swamp here. You can just play a one, a two, and a three pretty easily. Okay. Yeah, I still think I want to get a lucky witness. It's a good threat to play. Well, it's immediately trumped by our opponent. We'll play the two one. on full on Grixis here. I think I'm willing to trade. Two two gains life mark. Okay, I'm gonna play this and make a treasure. Sadly the unlucky witness has been quite bad. That's brutal. And we hit a card we can't cast. That sucks. Make. They hit one of our, our bigger our bigger threats. So I think it's pretty much Zeatora or Bust, like in the next like two turns. It's a damn shame we did not open. I don't think we opened a very good pool, just sort of in general here, sadly, but we'll try to make the best of what we got. Well, I mean, that's that's pretty rough, I'm going to be honest. I don't think there's much coming back here. Yep, it even gets lifelink in. All right, well, I mean, that ain't, that ain't doing the job here, but we're going to play player cards that can't activate. All right, I can't activate. Throw contender. It's an interesting design of a card. All right, what we got? I got. I'm taking two in the air. Damn it! That ain't gonna do it. Um.
They have a flash threat. I'm just gonna get blown out here. Yeah, they oh my gosh, it's Evelyn. That's brutal. I'm going to concede here. Yeah, I don't think our deck is very good. I don't think our pool is very good. If I'm being quite honest with the chat. Uh, Alright, whatever. I did not. Our pool is sadly both shallow and void of playable rares, which is not fantastic for us. Totally crazed. Oh, uh, this isn't bad. It's a little slow, but you know, beyond that, it's come on. Um, we'll go unlucky with this. Sticky Fingers is a really, really good card. Yeah. Mouse cord's all twisted. I'm going to play the Pyre Sledge Arsonist. Best to get this thing down now before they play any threats. And at the very least, they can start dealing one. So if they play any X1 creatures, this could be quite strong. Alright. Widespread Thieving. X damage to any target. So I crack them for one, play Swamp, Exhibition, Magician, make a treasure, have a treasure. I can't, I can't, so okay, so yeah, I, I might as well just attack them. There's no, no way for this to deal two without me just wasting mana, so. Mm, I think I will hold the I'll hold the treasures here. Yeah, that's fine. So we get to draw a card and uh, we'll do a bunch of stuff next turn. So I could play this land. I think we're more interested. Actually, I think I want to play the big scourge here. Yeah. We'll get rid of one of these initiates. Two. Black. Green. Some more of these. Play this reach guy. Kill that. Kill them for two. Probably, actually, I probably could have just gone with the strangle there and gotten in for two. Yeah, that probably was just better. Hmm, tough to say. I ain't one one. Have some kind of removal spell. My guys are one one now. Sounds good to me. Okay. Well, I think I'm interested in just kind of get as much damage in as possible here. Play this. Swim team, get in for five. Play this. If they play this guy, I can just rip a tears charm to kill it. And then I'm getting in for eight, and they're virtually just dead on the battlefield after that. Legitimate business person. I love that. It's so fun.
change up this music. Alright. I suppose they could make a 1-1. One, one. A couple of things here. We also have the option of uh, uh, getting that virtual draw three here, which is not bad at all. These hideaway enchantments are deceptively good. I remember when I was reading them for the first time, and I honestly was not like not expecting them to be as good as they are. Okay, they're making the 1-1. One, one. Okay, that's fine. I don't think I really care to, to rip a Tears Charm here. What are, they, what are they thinking about? They must have like a one mana removal spell. Okay, we gotta light them up. That's fine. And I'm going to send it. They're going to block the 2-1 and take 3, I'm guessing. Bear with me, chat. My, uh, Antivirus is trying to force me to set up a plug-in, otherwise it's going to keep it, you know, annoying the shit out of me. Good old Spectrum. I think we can do this. I get him with a Riveteer's Charm. I get him down to three. We can just go to our turn here. Deal with something. Oh, I can blitz this. That's amazing. So here we can actually now get in four. So I'll put this here. We're going to get at least three damage in now. That's fine. Play this guy. And this guy's gonna die. We are gonna get to draw a card for our troubles. Not fantastic, but... Okay. Opponents played their glamorous out well. Got him. D O T B dead on the battlefield. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can do anything differently, right? I think this card, this card actually might be playable. I'll cut one of those. I think a conniving, like, it, it, this is like a 5-2 menace. Like, that could be quite strong and something could really leverage. I don't, I didn't really see anything that this would be good against. Yeah, we'll just 
Right. I'm sure I could have also. I, I think we should maybe consider playing Jet here as well. We did have some good Jet cards, as well as one of the the fixers. What we got? We've got an unplayable hand. We've got an even worse hand. This pretty much sums up my 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 opinions of playing Magic. Sometimes uh, I have less. where I just straight up mulligan to five and I'm going to immediately lose because I uh, don't have uh, don't have anything to do. I couldn't mulligan to four either. But it is pretty much a death sentence. Yeah, I'm just going to continue. That's Magic the Gathering. I ain't queued into traditional seal. I actually prefer to play the best of one seal, and I made a mistake. Uh, I'm going to resign. I don't like our pool. I think our pool is bad enough that I don't even want to bother. Just sad. I hate having to do that, but like... So, okay. So, yeah, this is the queue I would normally play in. I think this is a much friendlier queue. You know, the, floor, the floor is the same, but you get to play against a wider variety of decks, but that is what it is. Um... I have two draft tokens here. Well, let's go to some drafts. Okay, yeah, big fan of Jewel Thief. What's this do? Crowbar. Enters the battlefield, you make a crowbar. You make a citizen and attach crowbar to it, rather. It's uh, destroyed to the ground. But yeah, it's a fine card. That's also a fine card. It costs two if it targets a green permanent. Yeah, I'm going with Jewel Thief. Jewel Thief is a. Ooh, it's murder. Ah, oh, it's tough. I feel like there's more decks that I'll end up playing Jewel Thief, and I may regret that decision, but I'm willing to... I immediately regret that decision. Um, Take the outlaw. So I, I've kind of come up with a philosophy when it comes to this uh, this format, at least uh, an idea. Yeah, the pugilist is really strong. Um, and that idea is that you should always take a good card or fixing, and like then that's it. Like here, I'm going to take courier's briefcase because it's just a really good card, but. Uh, So like here, I'm actually in a position where I could go into Jetmere. I'm in a position where I could go into Riveteers. This is just like generally, like you always want to try and uh, keep yourself in that three-color draft format. In general, you should always keep yourself open to as many of the three-color combinations as possible. But it is, with the kind of fixing we have in this set, completely and 100% possible to uh, just straight up play like five colors. Uh, best card here is probably just Body Dropper. Yeah, I don't think Rock's Pummeler here is particularly fantastic. Ooh, I'm a big fan of the of a fi fixing land. Let's take a peek here. So this is this guy. I mean, Pyre Sledge Arsonist is a probably a really good card. Is it better than Racers? I think it is probably better than Racers. That's more upside than Racers, right? 
So something that I really like about Glamorous Outlaw and these like so, like pseudo off color uh, fixer creatures, uh, they you can you can put this on like a forest and then add forest taps for black and red. That that thing goes without saying super obvious, but that that forest also taps for blue, meaning like later on in the draft when you're at a point where uh, I'm gonna go with the Jet Mirrors uh, fixer. Like when you when you no longer need it to tap for black or red, you can tap it for blue, and then still cast it. So like this card is castable in the Riveteer's color, and similarly the Riveteer fixer is also uh, playable in Masonros. Uh, similarly in our deck, the Naya fixer would also work. The Jet Mirror one. Uh, Deal Gone Bad's a pretty easy pick here. I think that was our that that was our pack. So this went all the way around. We're not married to black, but again, in draft we have the ability to pick up a lot of fixing. Not a big fan of that. Uh, I'll take the rare. It's probably not playable in our deck, but it's probably not bad either. Yeah, I think we're going to go with, we'll go with the five drop. you will gone bad, just go with the, not the greatest removal. I'll play another one of these, uh, but definitely not bad by any stretch. Shakedown Heavy is a hell of a magic card. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll, I'll play the Shakedown Heavy. Just all of the good cards. Um, this card is insane. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna play that. Night, night clubber. Bear with me, chat. My partner is out, out hanging out with some friends, so I have to send him some virtual love. Okay, uh, Mass Bandits is an easy pick. Light em up is quite strong as well. Good on rate two drop removal. I think I favor the Mass Bandits though. This is also quite strong. We could consider the Maestros Diabol Maestros Diabolist. I think it might actually be within our best interests to take this rare. Oddly enough. The light of my... So for me, like, yeah, like, Mass Band... Ah, gosh, it's hard to pass up a Mass Band. I'm thinking Mass Band. Mass Band is, like, these are probably the best of these two cards. Wow, well, okay, just a straight up Riveteer is uncommon. Uh, I mean, don't mind if I do, but... Whenever you attack, double target creatures, power until end of turn. I'd love to get this Mayhem Patrol, but I doubt it comes back. But Mr. Or Mr. Oreo here is uh, quite strong. Okay. Um. Definitely don't mind having a wrecking crew, but I, I'm not sure. It is probably the best card here, but I'm not really all that impressed. I am like the bottleneck entirely. 
Um, let's think here. Definitely in for, yeah, I'm in for the corrupt court official here. Mr. Oreo. Do I want a second Mr. Oreo? I actually don't think I want a second Mr. Oreo. I am down for cards like corrupt court official. It is a, a very strong, this is a, that's a good pass up. Um, let's go ahead and get that one here. Um, Best card here, yeah, Glittermonger. Glittermonger is not like an amazing card, but it, it will do the job. I mean, I'll, th I'll take a Gold Hound. I definitely don't mind having a couple of one drops. Ooh, that Light em Up came back. I just think we thought about taking that over the the Masked Bandits. All right. Once we're done doing our, our draft picks here, we'll probably end up doing a... Oh, oh my goodness. Low five vibes. Yeah, no, I... I yeah, Goldhound is super underrated. I'm actually a big fan. Ooh, it's tough to pass that light them up. But I think a tramway station is probably, probably really good here. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Goldhound. I'm actually... This is a card I'm really excited to play around with, like, in... Uh, Standard. I do not know if this card is playable. Uh, I mean, Riveteer's Charm is probably. Ooh, but there's a Pugnacious Pugilist is a is a solid one. Yeah, Angel. I mean, it's definitely powerful, but yeah, I think I'd rather have the Pugilist here. Ooh, widespread thieving. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I don't really have enough. I don't have enough to justify that. Yeah, I think this is a e this is a pretty easy Ribbeteer's charm. Got Rafine's silencer. Enters the battle through the knives when it dies, where X is. Riveteer's Overlook is quite good, but I think I'm willing to take the powerful three drop here. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, what the hell is this thing? No, oh, I, I forgot which card. Yeah, the Mass Bandits. What might actually having another one of these? Because we'll probably still play at least one copy of Glamorous Outlaw. Because I, I do like the idea that you can exile it early. And then in your late game, just play it using the land for the blue mana. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, easy, Lord Xander. Ah, oh, damn, there's a murder. That's brutal. I mean, yeah, I'm taking Lord Xander here. Uh, it might not seem like an obvious pick, but like... Uh, you know, we have Glittermonger. We have a couple of Treasure Makers. So it's just like, we have a lot going on for us. We don't need to play any islands to play Lord Xander. Like, especially if we pick up any more blue fixing. Because we, we got Gold Hound, we got uh, Courier's Briefcase, uh, Jewel Thief, the Exhibition Magician, Glittermonger. Yeah, we've got a million. And, and of course, uh, Glamorous Outlaw. So we actually have a deceptively large number of uh, things that allow us to tap blue. And here's a speak of, speaking of, there's a Jewel Thief. Big fan of this card. This is a really solid card. It's also a kitty cat. Uh, I actually think I'm going to go for the Racer's Ring. I don't think I'm gonna even going to... I don't even know if I'll play the first Body Dropper, let alone the second one. So, Oh, Lord Xander is this is a pretty nuts card i'm actually pretty happy we got one because i i'm gonna have to craft them anyway so uh ooh. i don't think we actually want to play i suppose if we play maestro's theater we could play a single island and that would probably be good or we could take light em up i think i actually favor light em up here well i mean i mean i'll take a third light em up Oh, look at that. Never punished. All right, we'll take that. I think that's enough of this stuff. 
because we're gonna have to make some cuts here but i think like some of these rough two oh, rivet shears out solid i mean a lot of people are really worried about this card uh i think the fact that it's uh it's attack trigger oh wow there's a murder in the pack jesus all right well i mean this is clearly better than that all right so i don't think we're on this cutthroat contender that's for sure um I'll play four light em ups. I I ain't I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest here with you, Draft Smith. You can't handle the number of colors we're gonna play in this deck. Alright, um I think body dropper and jet mirror sphixer can go. I think Ledge the this guy is bad. So it looks like we're pretty much going to end up being like a, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to play this one. I'm going to go play, I, didn't, I don't have a way to fetch my island, so I'm not really interested in actually playing it. 16 lands, I kind of want to play like one more forest. That can go. The Roast Master can go. I'm sorry, Mr. Oreo. I don't think you're making the cut here. I don't think we need all of these glamorous outlaws. I think Gold Hound can go. I, don't, I just don't think it's going to fit in the deck over. Probably don't need all of our light em ups, huh? So we got Night Clubber as well as, of course, a Murder and Deal Gone Bad. So we got plenty of removal. I think we'll start here, get our face kicked in. Yeah, I know, Mr. Oreo going down to the cuts. But I just don't think, I think he's better in an aggressively slanted uh, Riveteers deck versus a uh, relatively slow removal heavy deck that I'm. Um, I mean, this has got a, a curve. I, I ain't gonna call this deck good. I ain't even gonna call this deck mediocre. I'm gonna call this deck absolutely awe-inspiring genius. Okay, well, we can at least blitz this guy if we have to, so play a bunch of X-1s. All right, Corrupt Court Official. Get it. All right, now if this can only trade for a creature, I think we'll be good. Oh, yeah, free value. Our 1-1 one, one killed a 5-5. Five, five. You're welcome, chat. My expert analysis. Cabaretti Courier, that's pretty strong. That's also pretty strong. Um, we'll play that. We'll get him for one. We'll play the old Exhibition Magician. Oh, uh, I make a treasure here. Of official? Corrupt court official? Is this a is this a reprint? That's a genuine question, because I actually don't know. I'm gonna kill this forge boss. I like what was it like a conspiracy card? So it's the only set in my mind that would make any sense. Fallen Empires? Really? Yeah, would you look at that? It was also in Portal Three Kingdoms. Yeah. Actually, it looks like it was just in Portal. kill that later so I'm willing to trade if they're willing to block and they're not willing to block so we'll go ahead and play the old 4-4 here 
Yeah, I mean, still, yeah. Well, Portal Three Kingdoms is is beyond a regular set. Like that's like straight up like like cards from that set can be absurdly expensive because it was like a limited run, and uh, that was like one of like the first limited run products we ever had. Sticky fingers. Joke's on you. I couldn't block anyway, dingus. You think I... You think I came here to block? Look at this man. Oh, dang! That's brutal. Alright. I'm not gonna emote our third opponent. Must be blocked if able. Well, I mean... You insist, I'll play. You know what? Actually, I think uh, this is a sorcery, right? Yeah, I'll play the pugilist here. Corpse Explosion is a fascinating card. I don't know if it's good. My gut instinct is that it is not. If I'm being honest. My gut instinct is that, like, it's a card. Like, you'll probably see it in Commander. Because, like, you can do some fun things with it, but, like, I don't think you'll see it a lot elsewhere. What the hell is that? A 2-3? Yeah, bring it. Think I'm afraid of this? I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Alright, um... Alright, I'm gonna murder that. Get in. Four, tapped one, one. Yeah, like, yeah, that's like the only thing I could see it being good in. Like, like maybe you play it in standard, but it feels like there's not like a good way to get like a big high power creature into your graveyard early. Like, my gut tells me like you could play it with like Kroxa, but like you actively like don't want to exile Kroxa from your graveyard. Uh, we're going to blitz this guy. He's going to clean up our opponent's battlefield. We can all, we'll also draw a card. Actually, you know what? I actually think I'm, I think I'm down to just casualties at this point. Boom. Oh, it's only targets, creatures, or planeswalkers. Like, ah, this card sucks. Give another deal gone bad. That's not horrible. Our opponent having nothing is good for us. Come on, opponent. Kill my 1-1. One, one. See what happens. Play a 3 toughness creature. Wow. Fake your own death. Real original. Okay. Okay. Uh, you and you. Gotcha. Dingus. Uh, I mean, yeah, we just blitz that, right? Just get in for five, and then they're just dead on the battlefield. Trigger. That dies, and I get two, right? You know, just one. One tapped. You got it, brother. Get there. We are the greatest. Mill and draft can be good. Yeah. I actually, I actually think it can be, uh, in some sets it is a liability, like, like sets with a lot of, oh, the ore. Look at the ore. Art deco style. Like, I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of Mill in this set. There is, uh, there are good cards that recur things like Dig Up the Body is quite strong, because you can, like, casualty it for only a one power guy. Uh, this is fine. If I have to cast murder off these treasures, that's uh, not the worst thing in the world. But you got the weird, you got the strict downgrade of, uh, Prosperous Innkeeper, and the three mana two one that makes a treasure. So it's actually a two mana two one. It's so weird that they just tacked on make a treasure to so many cards. Aw, oh, sick. So good. I think there's three different cards that do this ability on, on Arena now. 
Oh dang, your opponent with the good man over here. Make a 1-1. One, one. Pass. Oh shit, our opponent's playing four colors. Time to, it is it is in fact time to be scared. Um Gosh, uh I guess I'm just, I'm just gonna play a two one and make a trip. I mean, that card's good, and it gets them up to five mana, but I don't think I'm afraid of it, so. If I really have to, I could murder something. And, like, what is this? Highest mana value. Okay. I'm going to be honest with Poland. I actually think these are kind of a no. Um. I think I'm going to go with just a good old-fashioned case of murder. Oh, it's because treasures represent Halo in the set, and that's like the drug everybody's peddling. So that's where the that's where the flavor of the set comes from, or rather, the flavor of the. Uh... Wow, this card is so bad. Yeah, so that that was like the lore reason behind why there's so many treasure cards in the set is that they're all just like smuggling drugs, which like mad respect, yo. Um, speaking of. Mad respect. I'm gonna get Ginny Fay off the battlefield. Ginny Fay, crazy cat and dog lady. Uh, I ain't, ain't, ain't fall for that shit. You could have. Oh yeah, sack that. Use that treasure for the bad card. Oh, this corrupted court official. The most devastating. Oh wait a minute. Does this they can grab? That's instant speed. So I'll just uh, chip in for three. Let me do my best, Johnny Silver hand here. Start shipping in. You're damn yeah. It's it's PCP. It's just blow at this point. Honestly, I'm so happy that our LGS did not decide to do the stupid Halo gimmick thing that they recommended. Wow, that was a bold decision just to take two. But all right, opponent. You know you could have sacked that treasure. Like, I couldn't believe that they were like, yeah, you should make these things, but you can't serve it in alcoholic-looking uh, containers. Or make it seem like it's drugs. I'm like, the whole thing is that it's drugs. That's the whole thing. The theme of the set is drugs. Lots of drugs. So many drugs. So many drugs. Floated a blue mana. I'm glad that we went to went to the, the rope for this. Untap the blue mana. Float it again, I dare you. Make a treasure. Pass the turn. Yeah, the the whole yeah, if you were curious about the lore of this set, it's drugs. Everybody's on drugs. See chat, this is your brain. Taking damage from this, that's your brain on drugs. Oh, absolutely not, no. I honestly, it's been so hard to really enjoy the flavor and lore of sets these days, just given that we only get a single set in the world that we're, that we're looking at. It kind of it kind of is a, a little bit of like, just like a bittersweet, like, I would love to just be able to spend more time with the characters, the plane, and getting to know the themes uh, and the, the deep lore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Four damage to target creature. You got it, brother. I'll get a two-two for my trouble. Pick a treasure, and then fuck off that one. Yeah, like I, I honestly, because I used to be pretty into the magic lore, and I really enjoyed a lot of uh, a lot of what the game had to offer that story content-wise. Which is, and when they, they do good lore, because, like, you look at, like, I think Kamigawa is a perfect example of this. Where like, like, did you know that, like, there are musicians who make original music for every set? 
Like, like I, I'll, I'll guarantee you didn't know that. Like, there are so many people who just, like, aren't... Like, they just do nothing with, like, they, they made a whole ass anime for Kamigawa and did, like, they did zero promotion of it even. It's just like, you have this deep, rich cyberpunk lore that everybody is just, mm, chef's kiss. Yeah, it's like, and good on you for doing that. Yeah, you're going to go, oh, look at that. You're going to get your Ginny Faye. I'm going to start coming at you for five. I ain't afraid. No fear in my dojo. Ship it. You got a double block. I'm going to eat your Ginny Faye. You're going to go to, what is it, uh, two and be dead on the battlefield. Sick. So here I will go and get a swamp, and then we'll just sack this during their end step. No reason to do it now. Yeah, a lot of the music was like I really enjoyed like Jonathan Young. He's a he's one of my favorite artists like right now in general. Uh, but also like I'm just like a, you know really enjoyed the Kamigawa music that he had made. Oh come on! Oh come on! It has vigilance. That was free. All right. Blitz, baby. Let's go. I'm going to be all pugnacious. Pugnacious. Respect. Draw your three cards, opponent. Yeah, GG is right. Hold my beer. I'm chipping in. I'm not sure if that's how the samurai soundtrack goes but all right look at us we're just blazing through this draft with our four color riveteers deck i feel like this is going to be a very common trend oh actually speaking of low five vibes you played it did you play a pre-release because actually i'm curious uh i did not get a, a an arena code for my pre-release kit and I'm not sure if anybody else did either. You skipped it this round. Okay, that's fair. No, I didn't. And I couldn't find anything online about them not doing it, so I, which I thought was a little weird. Because, like, I didn't get one, and I opened two kits, actually. So, like... Uh, yeah, I'd love an extra. I'd love if you have an extra code. Uh, if you type uh, exclamation point Discord in my chat, uh, we can connect to my Discord server. Or I think, uh, I don't think I have you on social media or anything like that. Looks like I can just chip in for one. I'm going to play the shakedown, Heavy. I raise your 2 mana 3 2 with a 3 mana 6 4. Well, that's a good one. So if I attack, they double block. I get to kill both of these. Or I can go like this. Just kill the 3-2. Trigger. You want me to draw a card? Oh, that also works, yeah. I think I have Twitter open in the browser. I do, in fact, have Twitter open in the browser. Well, I appreciate that, low five vibes. Oh, see, this opponent, they know what they're doing. They attacked with their 6-3. Their 3-3 that has, uh... That's got the, got the vigilance. 
<sighs> so I could do a few plays here. I don't think I really care to do anything with Night Clubber. Uh, so I think I'm just going to play... I could probably leverage this still. So we could do a few plays here. I could attack with Shakedown Heavy. They might just double block kill it, which I think I'm fine with that because I got a follow-up Pugilist. So let's, let's do the thing. Maybe they'll let me draw a card. Nope, we're just going for the double block. All right, respect. That drew me a card and it got... No, it didn't draw me a card. They just took six. Thinking about it. Yeah, all right. That's fair. Yeah, that seems to be a trend. A lot of people don't tend to play much Arena these days, outside of a handful. But I, I'm really excited to play Explorer. Because I, I won't lie. I, I've kind of just given up on playing. Well, that's a, that's a dick. I've kind of given up on playing, like, uh, like playing, uh, like, historic and what have you. I just, I can't, I can't be bothered to give a shit. Like, <laughs> Well, that's a kindness of you. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I, I got to a point with Arena where I was just like, you know, I, I was so sick. Oh, Jesus. That's such a good card. Uh, yeah, it makes a 4-4. Four -four. That's, that's a big, strong boy right there. So I ship all of these over here. I'll block the 2-2. Two -two. This will go to one, but then I can't light. Okay, so if I light this up, there is no good way to do this. Um, so I attack all here. They block here. Vivian takes two. This goes to one. If I just do this, okay. So I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm just going to have to go, like, casualty two. I have to leave them with their 4-4 four four and just kill the Vivian Reed. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty rough one, but I, I, them getting a, this is essentially a six-mana 4-4, four four, so, like, I can't be complaining too hard. It's just, you know, when we're empty-handed, it's particularly brutal. They've also managed to, like, just deal with all of our stuff. Oh, that, that ain't gonna do it. Looks like we might be about, we might be about to pick up our first loss. They got a, they got a... Ugh, gross. No blocks. Taking eight, going to five. And... Good card. It is not. That well-timed Riveteer's Charm from our opponent there was... Pretty brutal. Well, thank you for the arena code, Mo5 Vimes. Appreciate you. Uh, we'll, we'll redeem that quick just to have it. I don't. Knowing me, I'll forget. Redeem all right what we got we got at least 10 packs so i'm curious what this mastery pass looks like pretty standard shape looks like these are just uh, fixers. Oh, you're giving up the avatars. That's cool. I'll go with that. I don't really have a strong preference for any of these three color combinations. Okay. 
keep playing our premier draft. So ideally, I'd like uh, I consider any good a metric for a, an okay draft is a minimum of three wins. Uh, a good draft is five plus wins. So hopefully we can get a good draft out of this. Get some get some gems here. Also, I, I don't want to look like a total chump. Unforgiving. Huh. Oh, oh yeah. I'm pretty confident. I'm I'm usually fairly good at draft is a strong suit of mine when I can at least commit the time to it. Right on time with that tramway station. What's our opponent got? Well, I'm going to... On the stack. You always have to do it on the stack. You lose skill points if you don't. Sick. Um, I guess we're just going to play the old 6-4 the old here. I'm going to get real aggressive. There's actually a really sick... Uh, with that green... The green hideaway enchantment is really good with Shakedown Heavy. Probably gonna be something we're gonna be we're gonna be playing a lot of uh, probably in standard. I imagine we'll try it in explorer because you also have uh, Reginald rotting Reginald. Light him up, damn! Look at that shakedown heavy, still a sick two for one. All right. Well, I don't want to play my night clubber because it's not for any value. The Shakedown Heavy. This card's been really good. I'm actually, uh, I'm really excited to play around with this one. Oh, wow. They're, they're, so they clearly don't have a land. There's the Lord Xander. I also don't have a land. So I think I'm going to play my... I don't necessarily like playing the Girder Goons like this. I prefer it play as a 5-drop. As a oh, sure. Yeah, that's unsurprising. It's it's not shocking, let's put it that way, that uh, that's a format being dominated by Winota right now. Because that is, at least currently, the single most obvious deck you could be playing. Uh, I'll attack the two. If they want to trade and draw a card, I'm thinking we'll to take that. Pass. We don't need to do this during our own turn. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of Winota decks, but there's also a lot of there's a lot of good stuff uh, in the fo in that format. Uh, just like in general, uh, there's a lot of space to explore, uh, pun intended. Uh, but Winota is like the single most obvious deck because, to be perfectly honest, between like between like. Pioneer and Explorer. Winota is the one deck that's actually missing, like, the least. It's missing, like, one of the Elvish Mystics. No, it's actually missing an actual Elvish Mystic. And then, like, Voice of Resurgence. Which, though strong, sick post-combat play right there. Um... Speaking of sick plays, uh, uh, I will attack for two. Please block. Call my bluff. I don't have a combat trick. All right. Well, they didn't fall for it yet. I'll pass the turn. I was really hoping they would block there. That's fair. That was a good deal. Hopefully that box opened really well. Gross. Knock that off! Stop it! Oh, thank Christ that hit the land. Um, well, this Lord Xander is looking real silly right now. I mean, I'll play this 4 4 and just pass. Urbrask is so dirty in draft. It's, like, ridiculous. Oh, nice. They only drew an extra card, and that extra card happens to be one of the best commons in their colors. Luckily here, I can eat Ognis and chump block Urbrask. 
and then just be dead anyway. But I, also, I guess I have Riveteer's Charm if I draw a forest. Which sadly, I have not. I've not drawn a forest. That's fair. Pioneer is... I mean, I, I personally, I like Pioneer. Because, like, it is different than Modern. So, like, I don't feel like... I feel like it gives me a good way to, like, do other things. Oh, that's brutal. Um, you know what? We'll pack it in. We're 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 dead enough. Like, I wanted two Jund rares and then a bomb mythic. That's woofed up. I also had a lot of mana problems. I did though. I did manage to play through them. I managed to eke it out, but I did lose in the finals uh, of the F and M to uh, Heliod Company. It was, much, it was a much closer game than I thought it would be, though. Because it is that's actually a really bad matchup with the deck I chose to play. So I was playing uh, Jeskai Verktide in Modern tonight. Which, by the way, just as a heads up to everybody watching, I will, uh, here, you know, starting uh, this Sunday, I'll be talking about, uh, I'll be posting a lot more in regards to, like, uh, to what I play throughout the week, because I do play Magic five times a week, which a lot of people actually have a hard time believing I get the opportunity to play so much Magic. Oh my goodness, I have so many good cards in this pile. Yeah, I know, right? I guess I get to play all the Magic. Yeah, I play... Uh, Tuesday nights, we stream uh, just to play arena and what have you. Thursday nights is uh, the budget battle with my good friend uh, Drabinoops, where we jam, uh, where we, right now we're going to be starting season three of the budget battle series. Uh, that starts this Thursday, not this Thursday, the following Thursday. We have a, a week off while he is out of town. And then we'll be, uh, we'll be playing a uh, budget explorer. And that budget is, uh, Based on the wild card bundle, 12 versus 4 mythics, so a $50 budget uh, for each deck that we're going to play. Uh, and then I play, of course, Modern on Fridays. I then play Pioneer on Saturdays, and then Modern again on Saturdays. So I play Magic 5, I play 5, 3 tabletop, and the 2, uh, and then the 2 stream nights, and then... Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's fair. I think that's a. I think that's a, a completely reasonable position to be in. Playing commander. Commander's definitely a. You know, I. I think that's the way most people I know engage with magic. To be honest, at least uh, know and interact with uh, physically in person. I know plenty of people who play modern, but I love. I love these like. Fun little mech sleeves. Well, that's fair. I, I I hope your surgery goes well. I saw on your uh, on Twitter that you're going to be having surgery. I think I'm interested in playing the exhibition magician. Yeah, it's never, surgery is never fun, so I, I, I feel for you, but hopefully, uh, everything goes well and you have a swift recovery. Well, I mean, that's definitely a good place for them to be, I would say. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. that's that's the worst. It's one of the worst. Like that's something that like I know I know a lot of people who have suffered a hernia, and yeah, I feel for them because I I know that uh, like I've torn my abdominal muscle, I, and I know that feels quite similar uh, as far as like 
sensations go pain wise, but hernias just last so much longer. Well, so I especially hope that you, you have a good recovery, that your surgery goes well. Well, it's nice that you've been able to make it out. You know, it's uh, you know, it's a shame when something like that it, like keeps you from from doing something that you enjoy, and that just that just makes it all the worse. I think here I'm gonna blitz Nightclubber. Like I'm gonna blitz this guy. And then I could go either for light him up to kill the one two or light him up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go like that. I'm gonna go. Gosh, this card would be so good if it was instant speed. Ah, I think we'll kill the the big the bigger of the two flyers. We do get to draw a card and at an opportune time. Another night clubber, which isn't bad. We'll get in for three. Halo Scarab. Okay, another two two flyer is annoying, but then we can't deal with. I am going to go ahead. I'm going to blitz this guy again. We really just need to draw cards at this point. But this time we're going to swing with these two. I'm a big fan of blitz. Though I will say some folks that I've talked to seem to really overvalue. They they like they they tend to look at it like it is uh, dash. And dash, though they are very similar at a surface level, I actually think they are very very different mechanics as far as like how they'll actually end up playing out during the during the game so i feel like i could go i could go corrupt court official but i feel like i feel like i'm gonna attack with jewel thief why don't we do that first actually that seems like it's probably This this screams I have a combat trick, so yeah, that's what I, nothing I can really do about that, so it's just gonna happen. I think yeah, I'm just gonna play. I'll play the big four four here. That's a rough. It's a rough trade. This card is the, these types of cards can be pretty rough, but they can also be very strong. They can be bad while, well, like, like if you don't have a good opportunity window to play them. But when you get to use them in a way that it's a you know removal spell that draws a card, it's uh, fantastic. Sleep with the fishes. Okay, okay. I I see you, opponent. I hear you. I don't fucking like what I hear, but you know you can sell the fuck down over there. So this feels like we're going to be I, I I am also a big fan of the fish tokens to be honest. Uh I'm gonna go ahead and play Corrupt Court Official. Eat one of these last cards in their hand. And here we're gonna we'll we'll just hold these up, but we can I'm gonna i I'll attack the one. This dog is blocking. If you ain't blocking, you attacking. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I actually, I, I, yeah, I love that artwork. It's just cute. But it's also like these are like very relevant. One mana, one like one ones that can't be blocked. There, it could be a massive pain in the ass. Especially if you, because like this is something that like you might have to burn a removal spell on, just be given that it's you know unblockable and could kill you. But like at, at the same time, it's just like. You really don't want to do it because they're they're all besides that one guy that like exiles from his exiles from the graveyard like, but even that's incidental. Like, I don't think there's a single like 
instance of one like being bad. So here we can glamorous outlaws onto a land and then we can uh, probably just, we'll just play the other one. Yeah, we want to get this. We want to get the big man down. Um, it's pro. Is it correct? Does it matter? I don't think it matters, but I'm gonna do it because I can. Boom! Didn't draw the land, but that's also not a bad one. But I am just gonna go ahead and play glamorous outlaws and look for that on tech. Actually, I probably could have attacked the uh, one. All right, well, I'm definitely down for a mountain here. I'm down for clown. Send in one of the corrupt court officials. They want to they trade. I'm all for it. And then next turn, we could play Lord Xander. Lord Xander will eat probably one card out of their hand. And its other votes really aren't going to be uh, all that relevant. Well, that's annoying. I'm going to give that flying. Here I'm going to block. Chump block the legitimate business person. Yeah, they got a lot of, like, spicy removal. Witness protection is really strong, though. It, it, like... Out of effects that do stuff like this, like this being one mana is a huge deal. Okay, well, this is sadly going to get nothing out of their hand. So let's think here. Uh, I'm going to take two, four, five. I'm going to block this and block this. And then, can I kill them on the crackback? I think the answer is actually just a hard no, but by golly, am I going to have some fun playing Lord Xander. Now, I'm not going to lie. This seems really bad. Seven mana. Feels like you could, like, cheat this into play somehow. Like, with the five... Yeah, there's a five mana reanimation spell. So, it feels like if you could do that with Lord Xander, it's quite strong. So, like, if you're going to really... Yeah, no, they don't. There is some voice lines in this set, but they go, they actually stop doing animations altogether. Give that flying. Get that life link. Cool, cool, cool. A block here, and I'm gonna block there, and I'm gonna take five. Go to one. Sadly, I don't think there's a way I can win here. So this will this will attack, build them for uh, however many. Not to mention they have a one one they can block, but I also just can't block any of this stuff. Brutal, brutal. Uh, Excel top three cards. Murder. All right, yeah, they had it. Rough, yeah, RIP, right? I think that's a two and three draft. I will say, this is definitely a pretty punishing format. It's hard to say what, uh, yeah, it's rough. Uh, you know, one more token. I think we'll, we'll, we'll do one more draft. See if we can't uh, redeem ourselves a little bit here. Yeah, I know, right? That was a bad draft. Lessons learned there. Lord Xander kind of sucks. To be honest, I don't think he's very good. <laughs> seems to be uh, seems to be the what I've noticed. Oh, we got a bad card. Oh, we do have a good one of these cards. Yeah, I think this. Yeah, we're gonna take Quasar. I talk about budget commander decks. That seems like a fun budget build around. Yeah, Fairy Vandal. Fairy Vandal's a really good card. That's a that's another noticeable reprint, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm all about Fairy Vandal. 
It's a really good card if you pick up anything that like connives. You know, just being able to like grow this thing. It's already a, like a two mana one two flash flying. Yeah, I would build an artisan EDH deck with this. Like I could just imagine like like playing just like a brainstorm with this card on the battlefield, just to have a riot. Like windfall and uh the black windfall dark deal, I think it's called. Yeah, I'd be all about like a Quasar, like a Quasar, everybody, everybody draws, I, I gain a bunch of life, they lose a bunch of life. Though it is noticeable that it is target opponent. Oh yeah, my, my good friend Dravenoops, actually he's a big fan of Artisan EDH, uh, or actually I think he goes full popper. But yeah, I think Artisan, I think Artisan's a little easier for people to get into. Ooh, Obscura Charm, hell yeah. I, I, I think uh, I, I'm a big fan of it. I like when you have big card pool formats like Commander. One of the best things you can do. Because, like, as much as I think, like, uh, as much as I think, like, Commander can be fun, I actually think my favorite format to deck build in has always been, like, block constructed, believe it or not. Because restricted card pools or, like, restricted deck building parameters honestly can make a very fun like because you get to do a lot of explore this is just a straight up white creature that loots hell yeah fiends informant yeah so i'm not i'm not surprised that it's fun but it is something that i i i've actually considered getting into a little bit but i, I already play a lot of magic so i gotta be careful the miss is uh already doesn't get to see me a good chunk of the week because of magic so um looks like a pretty easy night clubber although i won't lie this actually was pretty underwhelming when we played it we should start to keep an eye out for some fixing as well noticeably by the way we haven't taken a single rare yeah yeah that's the big thing with uh adding another uh, a for me it'd be like because i already have to play because I, I i plan on uh playing in the competitive season uh, as well as the professional season. Ooh, that's a good one. I think I'm actually going to go with the core. Eh, I'll go with hold for ransom. be interesting to try it out. So, like, for because of that, I'm going to have to be able to play sealed, pioneer, modern, uh, sealed, slash draft. On top of that, if I want to compete on arena... Uh, for the arena championship as well as pro tour slash regional championship slots i'm gonna have to play uh ooh, obscure i'm gonna go with that obscure lookout or storefront i have to be able to play again standard explorer historic alchemy uh as well as limited might be uh might be a thing so yeah i have to play like seven different formats so one of the things that gets difficult for me is that uh, that's a lot to like, especially for like competitive formats. Like I don't really have the mental capacity to take on and try to learn and build a new deck in say Commander when I'm like already having to like memorize a bunch of shit for other formats. Yeah, because I like I'm at a point in my life now, like unlike the last time where I I, I played Pearl Magic. I, uh, you know, I didn't have the most resources back then, so, like, I really struggled to, uh, to, you know, really, uh, even come close to thriving. Where this time, I'm actually in a position in life where, uh, you know, I can, not only, not only can I play magic as, as good as most people, uh, if not better, uh, I have the resources this time that I can like I can just fly somewhere if I have to go to a tournament now like so I'm not as I don't have to worry about uh, I love this card cement shoots uh, I don't have to worry as much about like finances because I, I, I there are multiple pro tours that I did not play in if only because I couldn't afford the travel like pro, I, my one of my earliest pro tours I was invited to is dragons of Tarkir uh, which was in Brussels. 
I, I had won a travel voucher, but I couldn't, like, A, my visa was, uh, I, I, I ended up not being able to get a visa at the time due to some documentation issues. And uh, I couldn't, like, afford, like, I, I had travel stipend because they gave those out back then, but, like, I couldn't afford a hotel room. And I didn't, like, have the infrastructure to, like, share a room with, with other competitors because like I didn't know enough of the other competitors <laughs> or nowadays it's like well I, if I had to, a I know more of the competitors I have a group of people that want to get qualified that I'm like trying to like corral and you know structure out so that they can better achieve those things but yeah it definitely it definitely can get expensive uh if you're not smart about the travel expenses, they add up very quickly. Oh, hell yeah. Shakedown heavy. Look at that. Perfect 5.0 grading according to Mr. Luis Scott Marcus. I have to agree with him. This card seems fantastic. But look at that. That even completes my playset. That was my fourth one. But yeah, like, so nowadays, but this, at this point in my life, I feel really good. And I feel like I'm in a position where I can afford to go and play and I can hey I, I'm more confident in myself too because one of the things that I always that always struck me whenever I had to whenever I was playing pro magic uh, or pro REL magic was draft like like I like I remember very specifically at I think it was like the 2017 national championship I was uh, I was playing uh, I went undefeated day one constructed felt really good feeling really confident going into day uh going into the draft portion of day one and then i got sat between my teammate jake lamb and jerry thompson and my well, well, needless to say my draft didn't go very well uh i i was i was very very much not in a good position for pretty much the entire draft Yeah, because my, my teammate, Jake Lamp, he was our draft specialist. And this was Dominaria draft, too, which was a uh, very, like, if you were good enough and you knew what you were doing, you could force Blue-Red Wizards, which was the best archetype, uh, or you could force, like, Black-Green uh, Sapperlings, which was another good archetype. Uh, I I did open a good rare in my first pack. My pack one pick one was Daragaz, which was a strong card if I was in green black or green red because green could easily splash the third color without it being like a huge deal. You could play one or two basics and wait to get them. However, what ended up happening was I ended up in black red because it was what was open. Uh, unfortunately, I was passing to my teammate and not he was he wasn't passing to me because that would be a, a whole uh, that would be a whole other ball game. Because I did set him up as best I could for uh, for a blue uh, a blue white deck. He ended up two wanting the draft. I won two the draft, sadly. But uh, I'm gonna go with the corrupt core official. I actually really like the style of effects in limited. But uh, yeah, it was a brutal draft. And then my day two draft was uh, was because uh, I ended up day one. I was six and two. My day two draft, I ended up sat between Owen Turtenwall, a former pro, a really former, good former pro, and uh, Ely Cassis. Yeah, drafting is a. I was I, I always feel blessed because the uh, I where where I used to live before I uh, moved to uh, Appleton. Wisconsin. Uh, I uh, I used to live down in a city called Fond du Lac, and there's actually they, they don't play a lot. They don't leave Fond du Lac a lot, but there's a group of brothers. Uh, there's Jake Lamb, uh, and then there's three Lovren, the the Lovrens brothers, uh, Jeremy, Jamie, and Joe. And uh, they're all like they've all qualified for the Pro Tour by just playing like draft. Like, and that's it. That's all, like, 
they they like they top aided Grand Prix, got Pro Tour invites. They, you know, like they're they're really really good players. They just never leave Fond du Lac. <laughs> just so crazy to me that they that they're a that they're so good, and b uh, yeah I do come from Appleton to play an adventure. So it's, it's it's about a 25 minute drive from my apartment to to adventure. It's not too bad. I don't live far off the highway. Uh, so really easy to get there. And on Fridays, I actually go there from work. And I work in Menasha. Uh, for my, uh, my day job's in Menasha, Wisconsin. So it's like a 15-minute drive uh, from my work. So it's not too bad. But yeah, I, I go down there. There's nowhere up here that I'd want to play. Like I like Bob. I'm a good... You know, Bob and I go way back. He owns uh, Chimeras, but yeah, it's not too bad. And you know, over uh, but the problem is, is that Chimeras up here in like Appleton is just like they don't do anything. Like their play space isn't even open. Um, where are we going here? Yeah, this is probably the best card. Ah. Uh. Yeah, and then like there's a there's a gnome games, uh, that's pretty close to where I live. It's over I think in like I, I think it's Kimberly, but it might be I don't know. There's like eight million towns up here. Oh well, look at that, an ascendancy in our colors that got passed around twice. Hell yeah, void rend. Big money. Man, I was gonna need to craft these anyway. This is why we're actually this is the secret reason why we're doing draft. You cast it with mana value is equal to one plus the number of soul counters. Uh, oh, this card's fucking terrible. Like, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, I occasionally will buy random cards from Chimeras. Ooh, sleep with the fishes. Uh, because like. Yeah, like sometimes Bob just has stuff that like, cause like nobody ever picks through his singles. Uh, as well as uh, I can, uh, you can order cards from the Fond du Lac stores inventory, and you can pick them up in Appleton and vice versa. So, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. I, normally, I would really like there's a, there's an LGS down in uh, down in. Uh, Fond du Lac that I really like to go to, but it is that 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 is just too far out of the way. Oh, I would love to take this fixing, but I'm going to take this really good card. So I really enjoy this design, by the way. Of you have a Celestia hybrid, a Mono White, and a Azorius hybrid, meaning this is a. Yeah, I mean the Broker's Ascendancy is pretty nice, but yeah, like the uh, this Ascendancy. Like, this is, like, you could build around it, but, like, its mode isn't even that. Like, it's, its things aren't even, like, amazing. Ugh. I don't like this card, but I think it's the best. I'm going to take this cabaret and show it. Yeah, I... Eh. I don't like any of these cards. I, I mean, I like Corrupt Court Official. Ooh, hold for Ransom. That's just... Oh, never mind. I gotta. I have to take some fixing here. This is definitely not the best of the group, but, you know, just the fact that it's fixing, and then if you need to have a man of sync, you could go ahead and do it. There you go. Yeah, Rigo is an interesting card. But it's like, it's like a... Hey, I really like these designs just in general. I, I can't get over the I love these the way they did these mana costs. But like yeah, just like this is that would be an interesting commander now that you mention it. Uh we're gonna take Spara's Agitators here. This, just like we did with the last deck, like you could play these slightly off color ones because they fix your mana and then you can uh just take advantage of their uh uh I guess that's the most playable card. I actually don't like having a lot of copies of this card. The Ravnica flip. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're. Good luck finding those. Uh, Forest Plains Island. This 
just got planes or islands, so I think I'm going to take it. Yeah, those are those are hard to find because they're pretty old these days. They're about uh, you've snagged six so far. There you go. Oof, none of these are good cards. Um, sadly, it looks like there was somebody else drafting Obscura because uh, they never the Obsc other Obscura storefront never came back. No, I don't think we. I think we ended up in a pretty good place where we have some fixing. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I'll use you, Draft Smith. Oh, yeah. Cut all these bad cards out. Oh, yes. All right. All right. I'm going to trust Draft Smith this time to not just completely fuck me over. Yeah, I remember those when they came out. Those, those were those were fun. I like those a lot, actually. Holy shit, that's just a pile of good cards. I sorted through all my 5Ks recently. And I've just been finding... Uh... Oh, that's fair. I tend to not look at those things. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Those sorts of things go right above my head because I, I tend to to just not think about it. And because, uh, like, for me, it's like I always have – I mean, don't get me wrong. Most people put me on a black deck whenever I play, and that's 100% the correct thing to do uh, because I am almost 100% of the time playing a black X deck. Because that's just who I am. I have no qualms about how I enjoy to play Magic. Let's put it that way. All right. We'll play. Let's start eating through that hand of our opponent. Punish them for being on the play. Get shit out of here. You don't get to have a hand. All right, so our opponent has played a three and a three. Oh, there it is. Perfect. It doesn't come through on here, which I guess is noticeable. I'll have to figure out how that works. All right. I, I This is my first. I'm actually doing this. was a, Part of the reason I was doing this stream was because it's a test stream for my new uh my new setup, which uh, allows me to stream to both YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Oh, look at us. We just cleaned house on our opponent's hand right there. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how that comes through. For, I don't think it comes through all for you. Right? It does not. Okay. Yeah. That's part of the reason why I streamed tonight was so that I could... Uh, get an idea of what that, uh, how that, uh, works out. And so far, I, mean, I would actually go as far as saying I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy. With it. Um, uh, this screams combat trick, huh? And I think I wanted to take the bait. They did have it.
All right, well, I got a 4-4. Four, four. The king of all creatures on the battlefield as it is. Nightclub are looking real bad. Oh, we're almost to the point where we could play... Uh, I think here I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to do a thing. I'm going to blitz this. I am also going to go ahead and casualty. We'll tap. I think this thing. Yeah, we'll sack Knight Clubber. This is going to draw us two cards. Tap this thing. Do our land that we wanted. Rego, which he ain't looking so good here. Uh, we'll get in for four. So this was basically, we didn't have much going on, and I doubt that that is, I mean, this is a good card. Um. Oh, yeah, coming at me for five. Respect. I'll take my five. I deserved it. I think I can play Rigo here, huh? Yeah, I'll play Rigo. My boy! My boy Rigo with the shield counter! Let's get it. No, not an awful draw. Oh, that's... That's not cool. Get that shit out of here. This Obscura Charm is going to be a really good card, by the way. If, if, like, if anything's going to compete with Void Rend... Yeah, that ain't gonna that ain't, that ain't gonna work too hot, but alright. Wait, did you think I wasn't gonna just eat your thing? Alright, well apparently that was enough. Yeah, no, the obscura charm is like it might as well be called the absurda charm, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. It's probably the best one in that like it, it won't be like four of in your main deck playable. But it will be like, oh, you could you could play one or two of these, and it, it's gonna be fine. And you probably you probably play like two of them. I mean, historically, yeah, that's kind of the thing with Naya. Naya has never had a good charm because even like because this charm reminds me a lot of like Rith's charm in, in that it sucks, which is funny because like. Because even Gruel Charm was terrible. Like, uh, this is actually a mulligan. It is bad. This is a keep, though. All right, so, so I'm, this is getting a swamp. I think it's this thing, because this is just a generic three. Okay, well, that is a two drop. Still going to go get a swamp. Our opponent over here flexing with their with their Xander's Lounge. I do think personally uh, that a lot of the charms in the set are overrated. I think some people are putting a lot of a lot of weight on cards like Riveteer's Charm. I think Riveteer's Charm is good. That effect, its first mode is a playable card like on its own. And it's been shown to be a playable card on its own, but I, on the at the same time, it's just like you know I'm not I'm not gonna be shy, but at like the same time, it's a uh, so close. Um, brutal. That is brutal. Ugh. Oh, they even hit the land drop. Where's the gross emote? Well, you ain't blocking, so you're attacking. Yeah, no, this card could be really, really good. Like, a lot of people... Like, and this card is, is, is quite strong most of the time. Um, I am not interested in... Because if I block one, they just sack, either sack it to the other. Why would you not play that pre-combat? That feels like a big miss. 
Listen to your Spectrum Internet Assist bullshit. Let me fuck off. I know that your secure browsing is just here to steal from me. Like, I get it. I know, I used to work there. But, uh, alright, I'm gonna play a corrupt court official. Eat a card in your hand. Noticeably, they missed another land drop. Fatal Rudge. Fast one. Next. Uh. Well, I mean, you ain't blocking, so you're attacking. That's fine. I'm fine with this. I'm not fine with that. Hey, where's the gross emote? This is disgusting. Our opponent has just, like, juked us multiple times. Nice. Alright, you know what? Good game. We done. Hoofta! Our opponent dump trucked us there. Just savage beating right there. Oof, duh. All right, we got to rally back. I want to get this. I want to get at least three, at least three wins this time. And at least feel like I don't suck. Yeah, this is fine. There's a lot to like here. Punk's mulliganing, that's a good sign. Okay. Dismiss and don't ask again. Alright, we're gonna go grab an island this time. Probably just jamming the corrupt court official, but uh, I suppose there's an art. There's a, actually we'll do the uh, we'll do the backup agent here. Ooh, that makes me want to actually get this thing down. Well, thanks. I hope you get some good sleep, little fly. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the checking out the stream, and thanks again for the code. If I don't talk to you between now and Monday, I hope only the best for your surgery, of course. All right. Let's see if we can't eat through some more good cards here. Play a land. Have a good night. Damn, in a world of 1-1s, one the 2-2 two two is king. Alright, well, I'll play Quasar. Put the token, the counter on Fairy Vandal here. It's gonna give me a flyer to block, or not. It's just gonna, just gonna, we're just gonna witness protection. Everything. I, I don't trust Draftsmith. Draftsmith told me not to play this card, yet I'm getting my ass kicked by it. So All right, I want to play this. Feels like this is definitely our game to win. I 
we'll leave the two three back this time. Okay, well, that's fine. I mean, you can trade with some stuff. Not a big deal to be honest. Especially if they're trading with like, like so that witness protection was negative card advantage for them because all it did was didn't really solve any problems for them. So like this, this got to like kill two things, but it was like one thing that they had already spent a card on and like one thing that had already eaten a card out of their hand. So definitely get why people are not a fan of witness protection. I'm going to play Rigo. I'm going to for four. I'm going to for two. We'll send in at least one of these guys. And I think I'll leave the two, three back. This lets us at least draw a card, even if they block this. Well, that's even better. That's fine. They're going to take six. Next turn, I could even play this, and then we can draw multiple cards. Well, now this doesn't draw any cards, but it's still a four mana three one flyer, so it's not bad at all. Okay, that was enough then. Oh, almost one a.m. Jeez. Okay. Definitely feeling a lot better about this deck. This deck ended up with a lot of really good removal and some really good threats, it feels like. Uh, this feels like a solid one. We've got the, the Fairy Vandal into some, like, redraw effects, as well as a hold for Ransom. So, yeah, I'm feeling really feel good about this hand. Our court official is also really strong, but we'll play the Fairy Vandal to start. Start chipping in for one in the air. Well, they got a 1-3, so... Just maybe when, it, when a player is spent... Oh, it connives. All right, I'm just going to kill this. I don't feel like letting them gain any value out of it, so... Um, I feel like here I can just play the Corrupt Court Official. Get a card out of their hand. And we can swing in for one here. Now if they like equip this, I'm fine with that. A two three, huh? Do they value the treasure more than giving something flying? Looks like they do. I'm not aware that they don't. Um I think I can start with I can actually start with this. We wanna we're gonna go one tap both these guys, draw some extra cards. Because the goal here, then we even drew this guy. So sadly, we don't have um, double white, so we can't hold for ransom and do that. Well, that's brutal. Cool. Well, our opponents just stop. Oh, now we can. Um, I don't really feel the need to hold for ransom either of these. I reserve this for something a little bigger. Hmm. 
feels like I could just like take that, play this. This is this is a pretty clean trade here. Yeah, that's fine. I'm willing to trade. I mean, I drew a card and I killed a thing, so like, it is looted. I drew, I got to draw a card and kill a thing, so. I don't have any ways to deal with enchantments, do I? I suppose I have Void Rend, huh? Well, I doubt I'm gonna, actually, I mean, this thing's a 4-5, so if I do draw the Void Rend, I might actually be interested in playing it out. Um... Yeah, this feels like I'm just going to play a 7-mana 4-4 four, four flyer, huh? See what my opponent does? Yeah, that doesn't seem like a fairly good trade for them, but alright, sounds good. And this thing can't attack or block, so... Well, it's starting to load. Do they have like an answer to this? Looks like they do. What the hell is this? Oh, it exiles and then... Oh, that's a weird choice, but all right. Um, I think we'll grab just another white. Attack for four. Play the goons. So like the worst case scenario is if they have a way to kill this, crew this, and then attack. But I doubt, given their resources, that they'll be able to do that. That is a really good card here. I I I take it all back, chat. So now they're gonna exile this. They'll exile probably Gruder goons. I'm guessing. Crew this with this. Attack before. Give this back to me and take this away. And that seems like a pretty easy, easy line for them. Blue blocks. Um, I feel like I just have to hold both of these back as blockers here. Keep the land in my hand. There's no real benefit to playing the next one. So if I draw Void Rend, I think we'll be in a really good position where we can, uh, where we can come back here. But now if they attack, we'll double block. They'll kill our three three, but we'll get our four four back. So it's not really a profitable attack for them. So it looks like they're going for it. Oh, oh, I see what they're going for here. Oh, they could have exiled Lagrella there. All right, show me a combat trick. If you got it, you got it, but I'm going to make you have it. Seems like a weird block. That was a weird attack. I don't think that attack was very good. Because now I'm just going to swing in for seven in the sky. They didn't even, like, equip this, because, like, there'd be an argument to, like, you you could put that on the Grella, but I, I suppose it's it's bad no matter what, huh? Like, I can't even block. I'll play this thing and pass. Yeah, it feels like our opponent's last few turns were not, not the best played. It's not this is even going to start burning them out, basically. Word for bit, I draw a way to draw extra cards. I don't even think I have any, to be honest. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. They're dead on the battlefield, so. Well, I suppose not entirely. They could equip that to give something flying, but it's not like that's gonna. That's not forward progress. That's just paying mana to not die. Well, look at that. We're three and one. So this is classified now as a as a decent draft. You know, got to that three win threshold. Now, if we can take it farther, that'd be great. Doing a little posture check here. Oh, 
Oh, my back. Good Lord. Uh, this seems fine. A little bit of an awkward curve here, but we can go two to three and then play Regal the following turn. So I think I'll lead on Obscura Storefront. I think it's going to get white here. Yeah, I'm going to get white because this is a double white spell for, in our deck. It could be white, white, blue for us. But awkwardly, I mean, we draw, I mean, depending on what we draw, of course, we can always sequence differently, but it is looking like a court official to shake down heavy. Then a Dorigo. Okay, okay, okay. And, sh and Shakedown Heavy is really good, especially on the play. Because they'll be you know, on the back foot, and they'll be more likely to have to let us draw cards. Okay, well, they're really thinking about it. They must have a lot of... Either a lot of good cards, or... Uh... Well, never mind. That was seems like a really obvious uh, pick to throw away, but that's just me. Oh, wow, they got a whole lot of nothing, huh? We'll get it for one, see if they do anything. They don't. We'll play Shakedown. Here comes the big boy. It's looking really good for us since we were on the play. Oh, they got the murder. That's actually not the end of the world, to be honest, but yeah, here we're going to play Rego. One, trigger draw card. And now we're in a position where we can not only Celestial Regulator, because we have a creature with a shield counter, so we can tap down something. We can also play Fairy Vandal before we attack to start growing it. It's opponents on, ooh, opponents on Maestro, they're Grixis. thinking about it here. Uh, do they have something to try and kill Rigo? Corrupt Court Official. I think I'll dump this planes. Luckily, I think our Corrupt Court Official is actually better than so we can do two things. I feel like I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to go tap your guy down. It's going to stay tapped. I'm going to play Fairy Vandal and then swing in. Triggers. This is going to get a counter. So I've put them in a position now where like they're very incentivized to have to use this on Fairy Vandal, lest it like, get out of control. So, like, if they have an impactful play in their hand, then they should probably go for that. Looks like they do. Interesting. Do they have a way to sacrifice it now? Yeah, if they have a light them up, that would be really, that'd be really good here. Uh, no blocks. No reason to block and take that shield counter off of it. I'm going to play around what has the most upside for me here. Because even if I block it, it doesn't die. So I mean, I'd have to double block it for it to die. Okay, so they do have a, a casualty guard. Brutal. Especially because it gains them for life. That's especially brutal. Right, well, sadly, we've drawn a lot of lands here. Uh, we'll get in for two. We our second swamp. Yeah, we'd love our night clubber. 
really I love anything here. I want to take an answer for pretty much everything we've played. Sleeping with the fishes tonight. And a 1 1 unblockable actually feels quite strong here. Uh, at this point, I'm willing to offer this 3 1 for a 1 1. Because it means I can pressure. I, I, I need to advance my board here. Yeah, that's fine. Or rather, I need to advance damage. Uh, here, I'm going to play this in case they have another corrupted accord. They have a, if they have more of these, then this this would that would, it would go quite poorly for me to to not do anything. Okay, that's fair. You have to do that only as a sorcery. You do not. Interesting choice. Uh, we're gonna go get Rigo, my good friend Rigo, trigger. A car. Look at that. Bada boom, bada bam. This fish smack you like ham. Bibbity pop. There's a man patrol. De blitzed. Blitzed out of its mind. I, I like to picture that Blitz is like those the scenes from the Mad Max late sequel. Fury Road, where they're just, like, spraying Halo in their mouth, and then, like, that's the Blitz. Attack, trigger. That's a good one. Get the Broker's Hideout. We'll go and grab probably a, just an island here. Arguably, we could have done that pre-combat to, like, lower the chance, because we're already... You're already fairly low on lands, so it does it wouldn't hurt to like really minuscule the amount of time, the opportunity we get because we were like we right now we're sixty eight percent to draw not land. Oof, pick so it's hot. Uh, that's a good card. Imagine they're gonna grab something like murder back, because murdering uh, something seems quite good for them. Uh, involuntary employment if they have another uh, casualty card. Grizzly Sigil wouldn't be bad either if they have a, another cheap creature. What's tough here is that they have to choose before they get to see the cards. Because if they could see those cards, this would probably be a much easier decision to make. So our opponent should play around whatever they're most likely to hit off of that. Call the professionals. Get three damage to what? Any target. Okay. And a Maestro's Charm. So all really good cards. I imagine we're going to see this kill one of these, or maybe just come up top. I suppose they could actually play them until, you know, they may, do. Oh, you may play those this turn. So if they play, they can play a land. They're at two, four, five, six with the land. So they could just play both of these. Uh, they could kill Rigo if they really wanted to. And I would put them up to 12, and then they take 6 down to 6. Oh, interesting. They have to go for whack. It's a good one. It's going to be the thing that holds cards like this back, or things like whack. Ray of Enfeeblement, which is uh, a bit better than whack. It's whack at 4 mana is not a playable card. Fair enough. They're still dying very quickly. Sadly, we have drawn many lands. Uh, we are down to where we're 72% to draw not land. Gross. That's pretty brutal, actually. I'm surprised they... Oh, they're getting in. Are they going to Grizzly Sigil? Kill my two 1-1s? One that seems really aggressive here. It does gain them two life, though. 
Like, so it's not nothing. Oh, gosh, they have, like, a sick loop with that? That's gross. Nice. I'll get it for two. We'll play this. We get to eat the other card in their hand, most likely. Which is a good thing. Okay, it was just a land. They were correct then to grip that land. So, best things for us here... So here, this has flash, so there's no... Re Jesus Christ, can I stop drawing lands? Like, come on. I have so many good cards I could draw right now, and lands are not among them. Yeah, like, Rooftop Nuisance is going to end up being very good. A Corrupt Court Official is pretty bad. For Fiends and Form, it's pretty Bad. There's a lot of bad cards I could draw as well, but like Hold for Ransom slash Rooftop Nuisance would probably be some of the better stuff we could draw here. Luckily, our opponent is also top decking, but they do have a tramway station. That's not bad. That's a flyer, so that's that's big. It's a big game. And it gains two life, which is. So now we got a two-turn clock on the battlefield. Odin of Pressure is on our opponent to, to either kill my stuff or, or do something. Gosh, I didn't realize that Graveyard Shift with uh, Cormella is so good. Where you can just constantly get her back, and when she dies, you can uh, just keep grabbing back the ways to reanimate her. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, I mean, that happened. I guess I'll play. I got another flyer. I've got a lot of good top decks here. As long as they just don't keep, like, ripping the you know, removal spells, we should be fine. So now they have a sweeper in their graveyard, so we really can't afford to kill Cormella. play Crooked Custodian. We're not dead, but they, they are dead on the battlefield. So here, they had to have ripped a removal spell. They didn't. We win. That was a tight one. It was a good game. That was a really good game. Their deck had a lot of really good stuff going on, but we managed to, to beat them down ever steadily. Look at us getting more orbs. Oh, we got to the, the four wins. The coveted prize is five plus, because going five wins means you get uh, a full entry fee plus 100 gems and, of course, the three packs, which is a lot of packs. Ooh. Nami versus the Salty Gaijin. This is a Snap Mulligan. All right? Is it? Yeah, it's a Mulligan. I'm on the draw. I could basically mulligan for free once. This one. Much better. Um, what goes back here? Probably probably a land. Yeah, it's probably just a plains. Cabaretti courtyard. Coo -coo -coo. Play a plane. All right. There we go. Opponents played a 2-2. Two -two. Dream Obscure That's a good one. Play the Informant for this guy on Taps of Land. I like that card. I think we'll get rid of Gathering Throng. So this being a 3-2... Ah, oh, that card's so good. This is a card we're going to be playing a lot with, especially in Constructed. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a, ooh, Pseudo Vigilance. Nice. All right. Um, that first 
passenger. I'm going to have to just kill whatever... Uh... Man, this is mana value three or less? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take the damage here. They play another... Okay. Okay, I'm going to kill this thing. It's a little scary to let them have that, but we can deal with that. We'll play our 3-1. Offer a trade. They're not going to probably take it. A little scary, but I think we can deal with it. Looks like they're probably, yeah, they're probably putting the counter on here. I, unless this is a bad card, I guess, then they, they definitely won't be putting the counter on here. Yeah, I'm going to attack. This lets me draw a card. I'm happy with that trade. Because here this can chump block. Uh, actually, this will trade, thinking about it. But, well, now it won't. That's really good. Nice. Now it definitely won't, because that's going to be a 4-4. Four, four. I can block this, so I'm not exactly dead, but I'm, I'm pretty dead. Oh, they got a pump spell, too? Oh, that's gross. That's gross. Where's the gross emote? They got us. It felt like that was that was pretty that was pretty over, regardless of how we played that out. If we had drawn more removal, probably would have gone very differently. But you know, definitely a solid deck from our opponent there. A lot of lot lot of stuff to like there. John Wick twenty three. Let me get gun food out of the game. Oh, this is a good hand. Got uh, all of our base, all of our colors. Got a corrupt court official. We're on the draw, so like they're already in their mulliganing, so they're already a card behind. Now they're two cards behind. Sick one drop. Um, play a swamp. I'll play a planes. This, get a card out of their hand, so good. And then I think we're going to end up playing this down as a... If we draw a Swamp, I'd like to play this as a 2-2. Now I'm going to Blitz it no matter what. Wow, that's so good. That's a, yeah, we don't even get it back. That's crazy. That's probably just better than, like... That's almost better than the... Uh, what's its name? I, I always forget the name, but the three one with uh, PV on it. It took my obscura charm. Uh, no bother. There's no reason to block because we're just gonna deal with that thing anyway. Yeah, we'll blitz this. Get blitzed. Uh, that's gonna kill the two things, and we'll get in for three while also being able just to draw a card. Swamp. Uh, any land, yeah, because now we can play Quaza, which is very strong for us. Take three, go to 12. Sure. Quasar. Well, I'm willing to attack. It's not blocking effectively, so we might as well attack with it. It's like worst case, they trade that fish for it, and at that point, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, that exchange of resources. Um, Easy Crooked Custodian here. Our best draw is an untapped land. Okay, well that, that's not exactly an untapped land. But... Uh, we'll play... play Fairy Vandal here. 
I think we're just going to go ahead and play backup agent and put, we're going to put this on Quasar. I could put it elsewhere, but I'm actually fairly happy uh, just making this thing slightly bigger because it's already going to dodge like Obscura Charm and uh, a handful, like a handful of other removal spells, but I'm just going to build up my, uh, this is a blocker here. This feels like a rooftop nuisance. From our opponent here. Oh man, and if they do it, they're gonna go for this corrupt court official. Oh, on this parcel. Sure. And we also got above this by doing that. That's quite good. That is also good. That's gonna gain us some life. Alright, I am going to. As you see, I'm gonna go right here and we'll sack this guy. To go, I think we'll actually go right there. Cause we're 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 beating that in the race, so I just want to smack them here. Cause I'm gonna get to draw a couple of cards, and then we can play this. Go get a white source, put us up to 15. Next turn we can hold for ransom something even. Get to smack them for seven. So it's a big deal. They're at 12, and we have the uh, we have Quasar. They're at a virtual four right now. And then, then the following turn, the shakedown heavy even comes down. Yeah. So right now they are effectively dead on the battlefield. So this could, this could block the four or five. They'll go. To, they'll be at four. This is going to knock him down to three. This could kill this, but, like, we're actually, we got the hold for ransom here. This card's really, really, I really like this card a lot. Because it feels like this is a pretty aggressive format for mulliganing. Like, because you have to, like, ensure, like, you can't keep, like, Plains Plains Swamp in your Esper colors. Like, you got to try and get a hand that has uh, either a piece of fixing or just a good of lands across your colors and because of that if that's the case it feels like we could very you could very easy, easily leverage uh things like uh, corrupt court official interesting this fish sleep with the fishes I'm going to hold that fish for ransom, and that one's going to go sleep with the other fishies. you got to love it. you got to love that you sent the fish to sleep with the fish. Like they don't do it every single day. Well, we got to five. That's a good sign. That's the, sign. That's the mark of a good draft, Jack. At least in my my opinion, my 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 humble opinion. Uh, sure. So this is well, one of these. Is, this is an island. This is an island. Got an island. This is looking like a swamp. Yeah. Ooh, the tenacious thirst trap. That that card's so good. So good. This is probably one of the best cards in the set, like from constructed stand. So it feels like, uh, it, I don't think it's quite as good as Scrap Heap Scrounger. Because, like, Scrap Heap Scrounger, oh my gosh, I have, don't ask again. Jesus Christ. My ISP that offers a, uh, That offers, uh, what the fuck is it called? Hmm. 
Oh, actually, I'm going to blitz this here. Clears this thing out, and it's going to draw us a card. Sorry, Chad, I was deep in thought. My ISP's uh, antivirus software keeps trying to force me to set up a Google Chrome thing, despite the fact that I have repeatedly uh, declined and also noted that uh, I do not wish to be asked again. I feel like our opponent is missing colors of mana. Just a... Uh, Just an observation. All right, I'm going to play Rego here. This lets me draw a card. I feel like that's fairly strong right now. It's going to start. I could block. That does expose Rego to a removal spell, I guess, but it does kill this thing. And if they want to, like, kill Rego from here, I think that's kind of fine. Or they, I guess they could blitz this. That's fine. Oh wow, they're just gonna... They're just gonna draw a card for four mana. That is brutal for our opponent. Looks like they're missing their third color of mana, so I, I get why they're doing it, but... It, Oh, that's 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 rough. There were fiends in format. I'm gonna dump a land, Jesus. Uh we have to hold up Void Rend, which isn't too bad, and then next turn we can play Obscura Storefront. It's like they're uh playing that's a fucking Urabrask. Uh I'm going to even shut that shit down real quick. That's a, this card's brutal. Play this, uh... Not interested in blocking the tenacious underdog. One we'll play this crooked custodian. Get the turn. Next turn we could just play shattered Seraph. Gains us three life, which uh, is looking extra good right now. What costs three mana and makes two bodies to block with? Oh, they're going for the treasure token. I'll attack the one. I'll keep my big body, my big, my big threats back here. Cause here now, if they play like another, wow, Jesus Christ, really? Are you fucking kidding me with this card? That's two times we've had to play against this card. It's so good, like annoyingly good. Fucking four for one, to ass. Naturally, naturally, they have. Feels like we're going to lose to having. Uh, we're going to have lost to this card. Very specifically. That's a good one. That, that's going to keep us in this game. Well, they hit their colors. Really hoping to seal the deal before that can happen. Small creature would be ideal here. That constitutes a small creature, so. Uh, we don't have any more, so. One, we'll target this dude, sack this dude, target this dude as well. Trigger. Trigger. Fortunately, that tapped our blue mana. Get him down to three. 
So here they're in a position where they got to produce a blocker, but their life total is so low that Quasa may just kill them if we have to play these turns out. 3-3 three, three with lifelink. Menace with lifelink. Say what? That's brutal. That is like as like brutal as it can get. Like the fact that they just like produced five power with lifelink. Gross. And this thing's like unblockable. Ugh. Ugh. What's our best draw here? We don't have any extra like ways to draw cards. Good. Get back. We have ways to get back Rego with Obscura Charm. We have just big bodies we could draw. Celestial Regulator might be good here because we could tap something. But uh, this is definitely like they're going to have to swing the, the Life Linkers in. At least the 3 3, which I blocked with my 3 4. If they have anything like another Grizzly Sigil, then that just is going to be backbreaking because they'll sack like this to kill this and this. Oh, gross just thinking about it. Well, I do wish my opponent would make a goddamn decision. It's 1.30 in the morning. I didn't plan on staying up this late. <laughs> just murder. Why was that a fucking decision? Like, that just wins the game. Like, I'm done. Like, you got me. Like, fuck. Just play the game faster. Shit is not rocket science. I don't mean to talk negatively about our opponents, Chet. That's not my intention. It's more of just frustration in general. Like that. It's like if you're hungry and you have a ham sandwich in your hands, just eat the fucking ham sandwich. Like. All right. Uh. I'll start by. You know, I'll go this way. I love that we have to watch the little animation of putting the orb on for these shitty fucking card styles that nobody that, that nobody likes as far as I'm aware. And you gotta love that those those card arts, by the way, they supersede any and all other card styles you put on your uh, put on your cards. Okay, fight rigging and Elspeth, another fight rigging. Not bad. A lot of cards we're gonna be playing there. Mythic wild card, you love to see it. Is it proving ground? Great, this card, I guess. Not bad, not bad. We're 81% to revolt. Got a lot of wild cards for our uh for our Tuesday stream, because we're gonna be playing a lot. You can see I got a lot of explorer deck ideas. I guess they're gonna flesh these out a little bit. But I'm gonna probably pick I'm gonna pick two to three decks every Tuesday to try out uh, and sort of go from there. But we're gonna call it a night. Uh, it's, it's way past my normal bedtime. So of course I appreciate everybody checking out the channel tonight. If you haven't already and you want to stay up to date with my content, go ahead and hit that follow button. If you want to support my content even further, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Uh, Oh, either here on Twitch or, of course, over on YouTube. We were live on both tonight, actually, for the first time. You can also find me at Twitter by typing exclamation point Twitter on, in the chat. There you can actually catch my live updates from what I'm playing in uh, uh, tabletop events. And I play in three a week uh, here in my local area, as well as I travel to play in the Nerd Rage Gaming Series, Channel Fireball events, uh, and some of the Star City Games events when I'm available. Uh, not sadly not always able to commit to those but i appreciate you all for watching